Hi everyone, I'm Carlin. I'm part of the partners team at BookBub and I'm thrilled to be talking about BookBub ads for the Ally Self-Publishing Advice Conference. So for anyone who isn't familiar with BookBub, we are a book discovery service with over 15 million members that helps readers find new books and new authors. And we're a marketing platform for authors and publishers with a suite of tools that boost discoverability. We're most well known for our featured deals email, which is the daily curated email that shares deals with our readers in their genres of choice. But we've expanded a lot since we launched that tool seven years ago. So over the years, we've added a lot of different tools for readers to discover books and for authors and publishers to use to promote their books to our audience of readers. Today, we're going to be focusing on BookBub ads, which is our most flexible promotional tool. So I'll cover the basics of how the platform works, tips for creating successful campaigns and when to use this tool, and how to measure your results and optimize your campaigns to make sure they are achieving your goals. And at the end, I'll also share some resources that you can use to learn more about BookBub ads on your own. But first, what is BookBub ads? So this is a self-serve auction platform. Uh, so every day, readers open their featured deals emails, the pre-order alerts they get for authors they follow, and other emails from BookBub. And in each email, there's a dedicated spot for an ad. So advertisers compete for these spots in an auction where one impression equals one opened email or one opened page on our website uh, or one reader's eyes on your ad. Our curated deals and author alerts are hard-coded and appear the same to all readers. So every reader subscribed to thrillers would see the same thriller books for their daily deals, but they'll each see a different ad at the bottom of their email based on their own author and category preferences as well as past click history. So at the moment a reader opens her email, our auction determines which ad is bidding the most to reach her, and she sees that winning ad. So unlike other ad platforms where readers are browsing a website and could be there for any number of reasons, BookBub ads are shown to BookBub readers who are actively looking for new books. They're opening our emails, they're engaging with our website, so it's a fantastic audience for you to promote to because you know that you're reaching readers who are trying to buy some new books. There are no requirements for BookBub ads other than you have to be promoting a book and there's no selection process. So what this means is that anyone can use this tool to promote any book at any time and for any length of time. So it's pretty different than featured deals which are uh, selected and um, only sent out to our readers on a single day. You have total control over your ad campaigns and can customize them for any marketing goal. And the results update within the hour, which makes it really easy to collect results quickly and adjust and optimize your ad campaigns. So I want to walk through each of the elements you would set up in an ad campaign and share tips and strategies for each one, plus some advice for how to bring it all together into strategically designed effective campaigns. But before we even get to setting up an ad, the first step is knowing what you want to accomplish with that ad. So because BookBub ads are extremely flexible, you can leverage them to accomplish a number of different marketing goals. So you can use BookBub ads to run huge exposure and branding campaigns or ROI positive promotions. But unlike our featured deals, uh, it's harder to run an ad campaign that can successfully do both of those things at once. Um, that's not to say, of course, that you can't, but the way that you would set up an ad to achieve exposure or the way you'd set up an ad to drive a positive ROI would be very different. So you should know your primary goal for each campaign and design the ads accordingly. And in terms of audiences, you can use BookBub ads to gain new readers and also to promote to an author's existing fan base. The first step in actually setting up your ad campaign is choosing a book to promote. Um, of course, this probably happens in tandem with goal setting. But the first step when you land on the create a new ad form in your BookBub partner dashboard is to search for the title that you want to promote. And if we have any links on file for that book, we'll automatically pull them into a later part of the form for you. Uh, and also adding books to your ad campaigns allows you to search for all of your ad campaigns and view all of the results uh, for that particular title. So it's really helpful for stats and reporting down the line. But this step is optional, so you're welcome to skip it if you can't find your book or if you're promoting multiple titles with a single ad. What kind of books can you advertise? Again, ads are extremely flexible, so you can promote any books with this platform. Um, doesn't actually even have to be ebooks, it could be audiobooks, paperback books. But some common use cases that we see include new releases, promoting first in series, of course, promoting discounts. Box sets work really well in this space. 
And you can even advertise full price books. We do have a lot of evidence that BookBub readers purchase full price books as well as deals. And this platform is a great way to promote your full price titles to those readers. The next element is your ad image. So the entire BookBub ad is a 300 by 250 pixel image, and the text and images contained in your ad creative is all that the reader will see in their email. So it's a really crucial element of your campaigns. You have two options here. You can either upload your own image if you've designed one yourself or if you work with a graphic designer, or you can use our creative builder to quickly design a basic image right in the ad setup form. So if you're using the Creative Builder, all you have to do is upload a cover image, or if you added a book in step one, we'll pull that in for you automatically, and then enter the text for your blurb and a button, and we'll create a simple image for you. In terms of image design best practices, it can actually be a little bit tricky for us to identify um, what's going to be most effective in an image because we're often surprised by which ads are resonating with readers, but there are some elements that we do frequently see in ads that have high click-through rates. So first, uh, less is often more. You've got a pretty small space here and only a couple seconds to catch readers' attention. So make sure that you keep your design clear, don't clutter it up with too many design elements, and make sure that all of the text is really easy to read. You should also make sure that your image makes it really clear what genre your book is. All readers have to go off of is what they see. So it should be really obvious at a glance that it's a book that's in a genre that they're excited about. And of course, your book cover often does a lot of that work for you to signal the genre. So most ads that we see are using the book cover either in full, like this one here, or they use part of the cover, cover image in the background. We also recommend including a call to action button. So on this ad, that's the red button that says start reading. Um, and a call to action can say all kinds of different things. It could be uh, get your copy for free or um, buy now, pre-order now, but it's basically a signal to readers what you would like them to do next after seeing this ad. And it's just a visual aid, it's not actually a functional button. If a reader clicks anywhere on this image, they'll be taken to your link, but it is something that's been demonstrated, um, sort of industry best practice in ads to drive more clicks. And lastly, you want to write a short snappy blurb that's designed to hook readers' attention. So readers are scrolling through our emails and our website to learn about new books, but when they see your ad, you need to give them a reason to click, especially if they're not already familiar with you and your work. So you want to include a strong hook in your ad campaign. And there are a lot of different things that can be a hook for readers. So a deal price is something that can be a hook. A trope that appeals to your ideal fan base can be enough of a hook to get readers to click. Quotes from other authors or from reviews can work well and so can making comparisons. So comparing your book to another book, movie, or TV show that a reader might be familiar with. And I'll share some examples of ads that use each of these strategies. So first, include a deal price. So we of course have ample data from our featured deal emails that low prices encourage readers to take a chance on a new author. So our 99 cent deals get 75% more engagement than the 2.99 deals. Of course, the lower the price, the more likely readers are to click and it's a little bit harder for us to quantify across the board for ads, since there are a lot of other factors in the ad campaign that we don't have control over. Um, but we do have evidence that ads for discounted books drive more clicks than ones that don't call out a discount price in the image. And unsurprisingly, free deals drive the most clicks. So our free featured deals get 11 times higher response rates than the 99 cent deals. And ads that uh, highlight that the book is available for free also get a ton of clicks. So if you have a free book, and especially if it's perma-free, you should definitely be running ads to bring in new readers and highlighting that free price. Tropes are another element that can really entice readers to click on an ad. So this is something that we've tested a lot in our featured deal blurbs. We run A-B tests in those blurbs to identify uh, the tropes that our readers respond really well to. So in this case, this was a blurb from one of our featured deals. Uh, we've got this first line says, when soldier Marco returns from war, he reconnects with Alyssa. This was one version. And in the other version, we mentioned that Alyssa was Marco's best friend's little sister. And that was enough, adding that line, to drive a 20% increase in clicks. So if you have a trope in your book, make sure that readers are aware of it in your ad. You can see an example here. We've got a second chance romance and a reformed rake in this historical romance. Those are both tropes that historical romance readers really love. 
And there's actually two hooks in this ad because it's a free deal price as well. Another great way to hook readers' attention is with quotes. So again, in our feature deal blurbs where we run tests, we see a 23% increase in clicks when we include a quote from an author or a publication in a blurb. And BookBub readers put a lot of trust in the authors they like to recommend books. So if you're going to use a quote in a blurb, we found that quotes from well-known authors are more engaging than quotes from publications. So again, when we tested this in the feature deal blurbs, we saw 30% higher click-through rates in the blurbs that quoted a well-known author over those that quoted a recognizable publication. Um, and of course, in many cases, the authors that we quoted here were pretty big names in the genre of the book. So um, the results for any particular ad will probably depend on how recognizable the author or the publication is in a particular genre. But our data shows that all else being equal, if you have both a quote from an author and from a publication, that showcasing that author quote can be a better bet. And lastly, comparisons. So this is something else that we tested in our blurbs, and we saw a 26% increase in clicks in the featured deal blurbs when we compared the book we were promoting to another book or work from another author, or even to popular movies or TV shows. And of course, the important thing to remember when you're making a comparison is you want to make sure it's accurate. You just never want to be in a position where you might be misleading your readers or setting them up with different expectations. So here are some other examples of effective ad images. And I think that these demonstrate how much room there is for creativity and making sure that your own author brand comes through here. And you'll also note that not every image here uses all of the best practices that I just shared. So while you can definitely use those tips as guidelines, it's of course always worth testing what's going to work best for your particular books and your particular audience of readers. After the image, you add the links for your campaign. So you can enter URLs to send readers directly to retailers or to your own website or any other website, but we do recommend linking directly to retailers for the best conversions because that's the fewest number of clicks from clicking on the ad to actually purchasing your book. And your links determine your region and retailer targeting. So if you enter a Kobo US link, we'll automatically target that ad to readers who use the US Kobo store to purchase their books. And for websites with generic URLs like Google Play, you can select which regions you want to include in the ad targeting. BookBub Ads is one of the few ad platforms where you can really tailor your targeting to readers that you know purchase eBooks on a particular retailer. So that makes it a really fantastic option for region or retailer specific promotions. We do make it easy to add many links for multiple regions and retailers to a single ad campaign. But if you wanted greater control over your budget distribution for each platform, you can also create separate campaigns. So start by creating one. Um, let's say you add all of your US retailer links to one campaign. You can then copy it and update the links to change it to uh, the UK for a second version and then set up your budget for each of those different regions. Some advertisers will even customize the image for each retailer or for each region by changing the currency symbol or adding a logo or other text to indicate which regional retailer the book is available in. Next, you can define your audience even further. And of course, reaching engaged readers is essential to running effective ad campaigns. So this is an important part of your campaign. And there are two ways to refine your audience beyond the region and retailers, and that's by authors and categories. Targeting by category interest reaches any reader subscribed to that genre. So this is a great option if you want really broad reach and exposure. But BookBub Ads also gives you the option to target fans of a particular author. So this is a much narrower targeting option than we include for our featured deals or many of our other products. Um, and targeting by author interest includes any readers who follow that author or have clicked on one of their featured deals in the past. So author targeting allows you to hone in on narrower audiences that are much more likely to engage with your ad and ultimately purchase the books that you're promoting. We consistently see that ads targeting by author interest have higher click-through rates than ads targeting just by category interest. This is just one example of an A-B test that we ran. Um, this was actually an ad I ran for one of my colleagues' books to get this data to share. Uh, it's just one example, but to give you a sense of how much more effective author targeting can be, we targeted just new adult romance fans, it's the genre that her book is in, and we had a 0.14% click-through rate with that audience. But when we narrowed the audience down to fans of eight uh, authors who write similar books to her, the click-through rate jumped up to 1.67%, which is a 12 times increase. 
And um, anecdotally, I've heard from talking to a lot of advertisers that they aim for a 2% or higher click-through rate on BookBub ads. So the second test was getting closer to that number. Um, but I hope this demonstrates that if you're looking for high engagement, author targeting is definitely the way to go. So how should you choose which authors to target? There are a couple common strategies. Uh, first, looking at your also bots on retailers is a fantastic way to identify authors who share an audience with you. Um, you know that readers have purchased one of your books and a book by that author. And you can also browse popular authors in your genre on retailers. Um, in this case, I would offer a word of caution. Uh, don't just pick the biggest and most recognizable names in your genre, but look for the authors who are on the top of the list, whose books share themes and tropes with yours, who have similar cover branding, or a similar voice. What you ultimately want is someone to look at your ad and immediately recognize something in your book that they love about other book as well. You can also browse popular authors by genre on bookbub.com. And this is only available to our US subscribers right now, but we have a whole Discover Authors section on our website. So that's a great way to see uh, which authors have large fan bases that you can target with your ads on BookBub. And you can also keep an eye out for authors that we're featuring in our daily emails who write similar books to yours. That's another great way to identify people who have a large audience for you to target on BookBub. And of course, you can also target your own fans with BookBub ads. Uh, so any author who has followers to target on BookBub is eligible as an ad target. This is, of course, a great strategy for new releases or after a featured deal if you want to retarget anyone who clicked on that deal. And if you're targeting your own fans, you want to make sure that your author name or that the series name is really prominent so they'll immediately recognize that. One way that we do recommend using category targeting is to combine it with author targeting to ensure that you're only reaching the most relevant readers within an author's fan base. So in this example here, this ad would only reach readers who are fans of one of these authors and also subscribed to our fantasy category. And this is a particularly useful strategy if you're targeting authors that write in multiple genres. Next, the schedule, budget, and bid. And these determine when your ad runs, how much you want to spend in total, and how much you're willing to pay to reach the readers in your audience. There are two options for your campaign schedule and budget. The first is to set a date range with a start and end date and a total budget that you want to spend during that window. So for example, you could say that you want to spend $500 over the next week. And within that window, you can choose to pace your spend evenly to try to spend the same amount every single day within that window, or to spend it as fast as possible, as quickly as you're able to use up your budget. You can also set up continuous campaigns with daily budgets. So in this case, you would say you want to spend, for example, $20 a day, and every day your ad will reset, and you can spend up to $20 each day, and that will continue until you pause the campaign. So the set date range is great if you have a limited time promotion, and a continuous campaign is good for a longer term campaign where you want maybe a couple sales a day over an extended period of time. The next step, the bid, determines how competitive your ad will be in our auction and the rate that you'll pay to reach readers in your target audience. So the ad with the highest bid for the audience that a particular reader falls into will win the impression to that reader and get their ad shown to them. And the winning advertiser will pay the rate of the second highest bidder for that impression. So you'll never actually pay the uh, maximum amount that you're bidding. And you have two options here. You can choose either CPM, or cost per thousand impressions, or CPC, cost per click bidding. You can see on the form here that we display a range of winning bids to give you a sense of what other advertisers are bidding, so you have a little bit of context. So CPM bidding is a good choice if you want to guarantee that you'll serve impressions. It's the best option for running quick, low-budget tests to get results really quickly. And it's also good for short campaigns when you want to reach a lot of readers in a fairly limited amount of time. CPM bidding is also the best way to ensure that your ad is seen by a really large audience of readers. Uh, however, it is a little bit riskier because you're paying for readers who see your ad, uh, not necessarily the readers who click on your ad. So if you are running a CPM campaign, it's important to optimize your image and targeting to make sure that you're driving clicks from among the readers who see that ad. 
With CPC bidding, you're paying for clicks, not just views of your ad. So while that is more of a sure thing in terms of what you're paying for, the risk with CPC bidding is it can be a little bit trickier to compete in the auction and serve impressions while still maintaining a bid rate that keeps your cost per click low. But if you're not worried about serving lots of impressions in a very short window, a widely targeted long-running CPC campaign can be a very effective way to drive consistent sales over many weeks or months. And CPC bidding is also good if you're focused on ROI. Uh, you can target really widely with a CPC campaign because you're only paying for the readers who click and actually engage with your ad, which means you're only paying for the valuable users. So it's a really good option for ROI-focused campaigns. And it's also great if you're promoting something that has a little bit of a narrower appeal than you're able to uh, identify with our targeting. So for example, if your book is in Kindle Unlimited, that's not an option that you can currently select for your ad target. But if you use a CPC campaign and your image says available in Kindle Unlimited, odds are good that the readers who click will be ones who saw that KU logo and are subscribed to that service. And when they click on the ad, then you only end up paying for the readers who actually fall into that target audience. Okay, so let's talk strategy and how all of these elements come together to create a campaign. So thinking all the way back to the first two steps, uh, once you know what you're promoting and what you want to accomplish with your ad, then it's time to think about which type of readers the book that you're promoting is most likely to appeal to. So for example, if you're promoting a new release, of course you always want your existing fans to know about new books since they're highly likely to purchase and be excited to see that from you. But if it's a standalone book, you also want to use that as a chance to introduce new readers to you and your brand. Of course, if the new book is in a sequential series, it's probably not going to be as appealing to readers who aren't already invested in your characters. You don't want to be promoting book four to readers who haven't read books one through three. But a first in series book is a great way to introduce new readers to your books. Um, they'll hopefully, of course, go on to buy the later books in your series too. Discounts are another great way to encourage new readers to try your books, as are box sets. So both discounts and box sets are great deals for readers, so there's more incentive for someone who's not as familiar with you to give you a chance, which means that you can target your ad a little bit more broadly to try to hook as many new readers as possible. And box sets are great for advertising because they also tend to drive higher sales volume at higher prices. So if you want to boost revenue, promoting a box set can be a good option. A full price book, on the other hand, can be a slightly tougher sell for readers who don't already know you. So if you're promoting a full price book, you want to make sure that you're reaching a narrower audience of readers who are highly likely to be interested in what you're offering. Um, so if you do want to reach new readers with a full price book, targeting fans of authors who write very similarly to you, um, and then try to write a really strong hook in your ad copy to give a good case for why readers should take a chance on this book. And of course, these are all just suggestions. There's certainly a lot of other strategies you could choose to advertise these different types of content, but the point here is to make sure that you're being strategic and intentional about who you're trying to promote to and who you expect to purchase the thing that you're promoting. So I touched on this with both discounts and full price books, but the purchase price of your book can have a significant impact on performance. So 95% of BookBub readers have purchased a book from an author that they hadn't heard of before because the book was discounted whereas your existing fans are going to be more willing to buy your, book, your books at full price. So 84% of our readers say that they choose new books to read because they're by an author that they already like. So they have strong loyalty for authors they already know that they're fans of. Uh, which is not to say, of course, that new to you readers are not going to purchase at full price, but you do want to keep all of this in mind when you're choosing which audience to target and how you want to hook them with your ad. These ads are from a guest post that author C.D. Reese wrote for our blog, where she talked about her strategy for launching the second book in a duet. So she targeted two different audiences that had different levels of familiarity with her brand. And she tailored the message in the ad for each one. So for her own fans, she promoted just the new book, the second in the duet, while it was on pre-order, assuming that they're already familiar with book one. So the blurb here says, how will the game end, which is of course designed to appeal to readers who read book one and want to know what happens next. For the ad targeting other authors' fans, she used a different strategy. So she actually waited until the second book had released, once it was off of pre-order, and then she promoted both books in the ad, noting that the duet was complete, and said, let the games begin. So this is, of course, all designed to hook new readers who may not have heard of her before or this duet, 
but she knows that it doesn't make sense to pitch book two on its own to readers who are unlikely to have read book one. And I think this case is just a fantastic example of how images should be designed to hook different audiences of readers depending on their knowledge and perspective. Um, and you can find the full case study on our blog if you want to read more. Lastly, how do you know whether your ad campaigns are working? So if your goal with advertising is exposure, reaching as many readers as possible, then you want to maximize your impressions or the readers who see your ad. So in this case, you'd want to target broadly and bid high to get your ad in front of as many readers as possible. The click-through rate lets you know that your message is working with the audience that you've targeted. So uh, if the CTR is low, you can either stick with the same audience but change the message, or you can try a new audience. And if your primary goal is making back the money you're spending on your ad, a positive ROI, you'll also want to track how many of those clicks that you're getting, the engagement on your ad, are actually converting to sales. Uh, and you can do this by either adding your own affiliate codes onto your URLs. You're welcome to do that as long as you comply with the terms of service. Um, you can also estimate sales by comparing to a baseline when you're not doing any marketing and then compare sales generated, the additional sales generated while your ad was running. And for books in a series, you also want to calculate the conversion rate of your whole series. So if you're promoting book one, some percent of those readers who clicked on the ad and purchased it will probably go on to buy book two, book three, and so on. So you can calculate that expected revenue across the whole series into how much you can spend to acquire readers for the first book. And then knowing your conversion rate and how much revenue you can expect from each sale allows you to calculate a profitable cost per click for your ad. So basically, how much are you spending on that ad to ultimately get sales? Um, and the best way to improve each of these metrics that you could look at in your ad campaign is by running tests, which is a really essential part of any campaign. So running test campaigns is actually not an optional step. Uh, if you want to have effective ads, this is the only way to make sure that they're driving the results that you want to. So the way that you run tests on BookBub ads is start by creating one ad, and then you copy it and tweak one element to set up your test. So it's really important to change just one thing in each test campaign in order to be confident that the element you changed was responsible for any difference in results between the two campaigns. You want to make sure that you start with low budgets for your tests. So you can get results with as little as $10 or $20 per campaigns. You don't need to invest a lot in this point to collect information. We recommend using CPM bidding for test campaigns, and bidding high is the best way to guarantee that you're going to get results as quickly as possible, and also that you'll get around the same uh, number of impressions for each campaign. So make sure that you use the same amount that you bid for both of the campaigns. And once you run the ads, you can then compare the results to see which one performed better. Uh, depending on which metrics you're looking at, you might want to see which had the higher click-through rate or which one cost less. And then you repeat these steps until you're happy with the ad results. Uh, so testing probably is not going to be a one-time process. It's something that you can continue to do over time to continue improving your campaigns. You can compare the results right in your dashboard. So this is an example of what you would see after you ran two campaigns. Um, these ads were testing different author targets for one image. And then we also tried using different images to that same winning audience. You can see the different results here. Uh, so this one on the right got the highest results there. And if we were to keep going with these tests, we might try using different fonts in that winning image, a different color for the CTA banner, or continue refining the author targets. But the main point that I want to get across is that small tweaks can make a really big difference in your ad performance. And the only way to truly know what's going to work for readers is to run the ads and let the data inform your campaigns. So that's everything you need to know about creating BookBub ad campaigns. Um, I mentioned that we've got some case studies on our blog. If you're interested in seeing the C.D. Reese uh, duet case study, um, or other case studies of specific campaigns that authors have run, or uh, learning more about how to incorporate BookBub ads into your marketing, you can check out our blog at insights.bookbub.com for tips, strategies, data, how-tos, and more. And you can also email our team if you have any questions about your ad campaigns. So if you contact partners at bookbub.com, someone from our team can take a look at your campaigns and offer advice and guidance to help you out. So I hope this was a helpful overview of BookBub ads. 
Um, of course, we do have a lot of other products as well. So if you want to learn more about BookBub's other marketing tools that we didn't cover today, visit bookbub.com partners.